So another excellent little practice routine that's going to really improve your positional play around the pink and the black spot. So I've placed three reds here in between pink and black and we're going to begin this exercise by placing the white anywhere we like to start and then we're going to pot a red, get onto a colour, then back to a red, then back to a colour. Now what I do with this exercise is if I manage to pot all three of these red balls then when I'm on the last colour I'll put three reds back in position again in between the pink and black and then I'll try and get back to those reds again and then I'll carry on with the exercise. Now I'm normally, if I manage to, you can loop like that until you've potted 15 reds and then from the last colour you can even go up for the yellow and try to complete your colours clearance. So all different things, all different challenges you can do with this exercise. When you're first starting out, just record your breaks. Whenever I'm practising, I always like to write down exactly what I achieve in a practice session. Just helps you keep focus and helps maintain that discipline when you're practising. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to put the camera in the overhead position. I'm going to play this exercise and I'm going to talk through some of the things I'm thinking in terms of position. I'm also going to display a cue ball on the screen as well so you can see exactly where I'm aiming and where I'm striking on all of my different positional shots. Right, so the first thing to note here is that I've put these two little red areas down the sides of the table. And when I'm break building, I'm always thinking about trying to keep my white out of these red zones. So I want the white nicely in the middle of the table. And that's going to do two things. It's going to make the pot on the object ball much easier. And it's also going to make it a lot easier for me to control the white ball as well with the different spins. So first red here, running through for the black. And I actually underheat that very, very slightly. I was trying to leave a little angle on the black here. So I'm going to have to play a deep screw now off the side cushion and back out into open play. So now the first tip here is really that you want to leave nice angles on the black ball each time. If you can leave angles on the black ball or the pink ball in this exercise, whatever colours you're going for, it always makes it much easier to then get to your next red ball. So you can see this time that I've actually made sure I left that little angle now on the black. So I can play this black now and I can just play a little stun shot off the black cushion and then back up for the red. So I've played that with a little trace of right hand side and what the right hand side does it means that once the white ball hits that black cushion it's then just got that little bit of side on it just takes me a little bit wide on that red so that I make sure I've got a nice shot. So again you can see a nice little run through and I've left an angle on the black. Now as I said at the beginning, if you pot all three of your reds here, you can then get the reds back out and put the three reds back in between the pink and black and then try to continue your break. So you can see there again, little stun shot off the black cushion and back up for the three reds. Now another little tip here, make sure you're getting up the table high enough when you've got reds to play for like this. If you leave the white a little bit short on one of these reds, you're then going to be cannoning into other balls and it just makes life a lot more difficult when you're break building. So again, on 25 here, nice little angle on the black to just play a little stun shot off the black cushion again. And I went quite high there, you can see, because I wanted to try and get on this red below the pink, knowing that I've also got the red directly above the black. But this one below the pink is a nice one to move. A little bit trickier to get position on that one later, so... Nice little roll through shot, leaving an angle on the black once again so that I can just bounce off the black cushion. Now if I just stop this here a second, what I try to play here is just the same as the other shots. I've tried to pot the black with a little bit of stun and left hand side just letting the left hand side flick me a little bit wide of this red. And I actually hit this shot a little bit poorly and didn't quite get much left hand side on. So if we resume the video, you can see that instead of going a bit wide like we've just seen, I came up the centre of the table because I didn't have that trace of left hand side that I wanted. So now I've left myself a little bit tricky on this red. Now I come round here and stretch for this red if we just stop this here. Now I could play for the pink or the blue, maybe even go up for a bulk colour here, but obviously then I'm moving the white big distances back from the bulk colours or the blue back down to the reds. So I actually decide to play for the black here. Now you definitely don't need to play for the black. It's probably easier to just go up for the blue here, but I've decided I'll probably try and stay on the black and try and make a little 147 in this exercise. So 
I'm going to apply this red with lots of screw and left hand side so that when the white hits the black cushion it's going to send it a little bit wide and take some of the pace off the white going up the table it's going to take that pace and send it wide off the cushions instead so I should still hopefully leave a shot on the black so if we just carry on then so you can see I've just about got into that nicely to leave myself a shot on the black and then I'm setting up the other three red balls now because I've potted the others again and now I know that I just need to play a nice shot on this black now if I can get into this black nicely and recover my position quickly I'm back in prime position so I've potted that black now and now I've got the white nicely back in the middle of the table you can see on that previous shot I drifted into my danger zone now with the white ball so now I've got the white perfectly in the middle of the table again here so a little stun shot down for the black punchy stun shot and then now I've got the black off the spot again nice angle I'd left on the black just to bounce up for those two reds again a little bit of left hand side just to send me a bit wide of those two reds again just a little stun shot off the black cushion there and then a bit of a stun screw there so what I actually did was if I was to have played a pure screw shot on that shot I'd have gone too close to the side cushion and if I'd have played a pure stun shot then I'd have gone too far up the center of the table so from the scent from the bottom of the white we saw there I just came up a little bit and played in between the two so that I got a nice angle on that red So I've got a little angle on the black here again and if you can start getting used to these angles on the black so I've potted that black there for 72 points but if you can start getting used to these little angles on the black here this is really going to improve your break building because if you can just leave those angles so that you can just naturally move the white around without having to force shots that's a massive help so again you can see 73 now and I've got nice angle on this black to just bounce the white up for the two reds above again. So I've got my white nicely in the middle of the table again. So I just need to play a little screw shot on this one. A little bit more angle than I would have liked but as long as I get into it nicely it meant I could hold the white I could hold the white sorry without using a cushion so nicely on this black here again that same shot where you're playing a bit of a stun screw shot to try and get the white up the table without getting too much screw and losing the white to the side cushion and then just dropping this red in dead weight just about keeping out of drifting too much to that side cushion we can see there so just about got my hand on the table nicely here so nice pot on the black there but just let the white ball drift into that area where it's a bit close to the side cushion for comfort here so as you can see here, I'm standing behind the shot. Just pause the video a second. So I'm standing behind the shot. Now these are really important. I've got to cue off the cushion here and there's a reasonable distance between the white and the red ball. So this is a straight pot. So what I do on these shots is I'm just trying to keep my head as still as I possibly can. As long as I just try and keep completely still and just push the cue through, that's gonna give me the best possible chance of potting this red ball. So I've got the red nicely. So I actually was a, a little bit straighter than 
I wanted to be there on the black. So I had to play the screw shot on and off the side cushion, but I made sure I got into it enough to get back into the middle of the table again. Now this is the 14th red that I'm potting here, so potting this red. And then because I've potted 15 reds, if I manage to get on this last one, I won't actually bother here getting any more reds out. So if I manage to pot 15 reds with colours, I'll then just go up for the yellow and try to complete the colours clearance. So I left a nice natural angle on the black here to go up for the yellow. And I actually underhit this very slightly. So I'm a little bit closer to the side cushion than I would like to be. So what I think on these shots now is I'm thinking to myself, one more good shot on this yellow now and I should get myself back into a nice position. So just trying to play this as a nice deep screw, get into the white ball nicely. As long as I get that pot, so I've hit that quite nicely, I've now just got to complete my colours clearance. And this is where your colours clearance practice will come in and be so important when you're doing these exercises. If you're confident that you can complete the colours clearance, then when you're doing these exercises and you're on a bit of a break like I am here, it just gives you the confidence to know that you've cleared the colours lots of times before in practice and that you should be able to do it now as well. So nicely on the blue here, I actually hit this a little bit poorly here, just didn't quite hold the white as much as I would have wanted to. So in between shots on this pink, I haven't really got enough angle to go around the table, so I just decided to drop it in and try and just leave the white in the middle of the table where I've got a nice shot on the black. And then with my hand on the table, I don't have to do anything special here. And then I can just drop the black in, natural ball. And that's a little 147 completed in that exercise there. So hopefully you found that useful there and you can see all the different positions that I was striking on the cue ball to maintain my control around the pink and the black spot there. Now, as I say, when you're first starting out and you're trying to improve, I would just always make a note of the breaks that I managed to do in an exercise like this. So you're only ever really competing against yourself. You need to make a record of exactly what you achieve and then constantly try and push yourself to just get better and better, little small incremental improvements in exercises and learning how to control the white ball. So as always, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, then please give the video a like. If you want to see more practice routine videos like this and lots of instructional tutorials, then please subscribe to the channel. Please consider as well supporting these videos on Patreon. That really helps me just devote more time to filming and editing these videos. And as always, thanks for watching. Cheers.